everyone. Welcome to the Infragistics What's New and Ultimate 18.1 webinar. I just want to get started really quickly by introducing our presenters for this webinar today. Our first speaker will be Jason Barris. He's the Senior Vice President of Developer Tools at Infragistics. He spearheads all of our customer-driven innovative features and functionality for all of our products. And he's also Microsoft.NET MVP, member of the Inetta Speakers Bureau, and a chair at Inetta's Academic Committee. And our second presenter today will also be Brian Lagunas. He's our senior product owner here at Infragistics as well. He is a very well-known Microsoft MVP, also a Xamarin MVP, and a broad, a broad member of Boys CoCamp speaker, trainer, and a plural site author. So if everybody is ready to go in depth for our overview of our 18.1 release, I'll go ahead and pass it off to Jason and then we can get started. Great, thanks, Summer. And I'm assuming everyone can hear me. It looks like my computer audio is working. Uh, if there's any issues, jump into the chat little box and, and let us know. But let's uh, let's go ahead and get started with the webinar today. Change my display settings. Okay, cool. So as Summer said, uh, I'm Jason Barris. I'm the Senior VP of Developer Tools here at Infragistics. I'm with Brian Lagunas today. Um, the next 30 minutes or so, we want to walk you through uh, what happened in 18.1. So we have a huge release today. Uh, actually happened last week. Um, we had a huge release that uh, shipped, uh, I think, broadly to customers uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And then, um, you know, hopefully you guys have had a chance to read the email, maybe read one of the What's New blogs. But this webinar will get you up to speed on everything um, that we did ship uh, in 18.1. So. What I want to talk about is the, the core areas, and, and if you think about what does 18.1 mean to you, and what should you be thinking about, and sort of what are we thinking about in terms of where we need to add features, improve features, and spend time, uh, the number one thing that we worked on was around um, Angular charts and grids. So we shipped our Angular product last year. Uh, we had a data grid for Angular, which was really awesome, um, and had some core features, but we did some dramatic improvements with this release. Um, and so we're pretty happy right now that when you download this 18.1 version, which is technically, uh, if you go to NPM, and I'll, I'll show you that today, I think it's the 5.3 release of our Angular product, uh, you will get the fastest grid, not only the fastest grid, but all the core features you need to drive um, beautiful applications with your customers. Why Angular? Because that's all we hear about is Angular, especially in the line of business in the enterprise. Angular delivers sort of this all-in-one framework that makes it easy for you to build robust applications that sort of cover all of the concerns that you need as a developer versus other frameworks like React is just a front-end rendering engine. Vue is a little bit different. Um, really is a little bit different. And so we hear Angular over and over and over again. So we've decided to sort of spend a lot of time on Angular um, you know, a little bit of that last year, this year for sure, and probably going into next year as, as we kind of build out what, what you've come to expect from Infragistics in terms of a, a robust product. We also are introducing charts for the first time in Angular. We shipped a couple years ago what we called the category chart in WPF, uh, Windows Forms, and JavaScript. And we have now moved that over to Angular, and you'll see that the category chart gives you all the common business charts types that you need and from the roadmap perspective we'll just continue to improve uh, in that area the second thing that we've really focused on is best of breed ui for financial services we have a lot of customers in the financial services space and that sort of goes down to performance in the data grids and then the data charts but also the types of visualizations that we offer in this release we are shipping our brand new financial chart and the financial chart is great because it is a one-stop shop for your typical uh, stock comparison, zoom in, zoom out, do different types of financial indicators, trend lines. You know, uh, if you are doing any type of financial display, this is the chart you should be using. And so we've done a lot of work here, not only in Angular, but in WPF uh, as well and in JavaScript. And then finally, the third thing I want you to think about with this release is we've blown it out in our Excel library and in our spreadsheets across platforms. So the Excel library was already massively uh, 
feature rich. Like if you don't need Excel to do Excel with the Infragistics Excel library. You can create workbooks, create worksheets, do all the formulas, et cetera, all without Excel. Well, we've even added more to that. So we've added a hundred more functions to Excel. We've added um, new capabilities in terms of the UI on how the spreadsheet works. Brian's going to go a deep dive demo into that. So we're pretty excited about this. And you know, even cooler is there's still some gaps there and we're going to continue to improve this. So when you think about what you're getting from Infragistics, for the most part, most of you look at the grids like, hey, I need this grid and it needs all this stuff. Oh, then I need charts and I need all this stuff. And then Excel actually became more or less the third thing that people asked for the most. And it was around the Excel library. So then we built the spreadsheet on top of that. And so as you look at the product suites that we have across each platform, we're investing in the, the core capabilities of the controls that you really care about the most. So we're pretty excited to talk about this today. So let me start. I have a few slides and we're going to jump right into demos. Let's talk about the Angular grid real quick. So we call this the fastest grid on the planet. We've looked at at our competitors, big and small, and uh, we've done some comparisons and we beat them all. Uh, now we beat them all, not only in the time it takes to render a grid, but also in the horizontal and vertical scrolling, which is really where it matters. Even if it takes a, a second longer to render the data, once the data is rendered, you wanna have buttery smooth scrolling when you go back and forth in the grid on a horizontal scroll bar and up and down in a vertical scroll bar. So we've spent a lot of time on a virtualization strategy um, for this in Angular, and we think we've done a good job. There's always room for improvement, but you'll be the judge of that when you take a look at some of the samples and some of the links here that uh, we'll share with you today in, in the webinar. So the virtualization ends up being probably um, the hardest feature and the number one feature when it comes to how you would perceive the grid on a first look. And then we start getting into features. So we had paging in the grid already, but we added a bunch of new features on the column level, like filtering, sorting, column summaries, column pinning, column hiding, column resizing. So that collection of, of features really does give you what you need most when you're delivering that typical line of business grid. The other neat feature we added uh, was grid level filtering like this was in the grid before 18.1 but let's say for example you just want your users to be able to type in a string and then look in every column in the grid and then return those results well that's a grid level filter we also have row selection you can see in the screenshot here i've got some check boxes i can check uncheck and then the nice thing is that carries over into our export to excel so you can take the grid you can dump it off to an xlsx a CSV, which is a comma separated value file, or a TSV, which is a tab separated value. So then moving on to the Angular business charts. Again, we've always had the fastest chart in the world. There's a lot of charts on the market. I hear about D3 a lot. I hear about some other chart competitors, but the minute they go under any sort of pressure in terms of data load, they fail miserably. So uh, many of these guys say, hey, we're an SVG chart because of this reason. SVG is the worst option for high performance charting or handling any volume of data. So you throw even you know 3,000 data points in one series at a chart like that and you'll see a breakdown in performance uh, and, and we don't have that issue. So our chart is canvas based across the board, but that's not why it's so fast. We have the algorithms and the know-how in the chart engine that makes it fast. So you get this level of performance in not only JavaScript, but you get it in Angular, you get it in WPF, you get it in our iOS chart, you get it in our Windows Forms chart, it really doesn't matter. So you can see the list here, we've done all the core business chart types, I'll show you some demos of this, but the cool thing about the category chart is that the category chart gives you a chart with essentially one attribute. I'll show you some samples, how you can customize a few things, but you don't really need to do any of that. You throw the chart, you throw us the data, and we'll figure it out and we'll render it. And, and we wanna take away any of the complexity of charting from you because charting is its own domain and uh, you kinda have to understand how it works to be really good at it. And we wanna take some of that away. And you know that's why we've added things like the visual configurators to some of the other platforms, but in the, uh, and the Angular side, we've also added the CLI to help you deliver things like charts and grids faster, and then you can go ahead and customize them. So there's nothing worse than I need to start a new app, or I want to prototype something, or I want to just see how something works, and you got to spend all this time figuring out some new framework or whatever to get started. Well, that's why we built the Angular Ignite UI CLI. 
Um, but the cool thing is, is it's really just the Ignite UI CLI because it covers not only Angular, but jQuery and React. So you can use our native Angular components, our jQuery JavaScript components, or our React wrappers for those JavaScript components and scaffold up a project with a bunch of features really quick without thinking too much. So you can add things like grids, charts, all of the widgets um, to your project. You can add features to those widgets. And if you have an existing project, you can actually add a new component to that. And I'll show you how that works as well through the CLI. And it is, it's like everything that's old is new again. Back in the day, for anyone that's on the webinar that's over like, you know, 40 years old, you remember DOS and you remember doing a lot of stuff in the command line. You remember command line editors, et cetera. Uh, then we had this whole era of visual programming and visual tools, which is why we had so much productivity. Those still exist. But now you start looking at the web and all these new frameworks. Well, they're, they don't have time to build tooling so much because they're just trying to get the frameworks built. So the command line was the easiest way to go ahead and do a lot of this stuff. So even yesterday, I was working with a product and installing it via command line, and it said I need to accept the license agreement. So it splattered the license agreement in the command line in a DOS window, and I had to say yes in, in the DOS window to go ahead and keep moving forward with the install. So the command line just happens to be the fastest way to get things done right now for the web. We've done a lot of work there and you'll see that in, in some of the output. Then moving towards more visual uh, tooling, we are investing in visual tooling. Brian is gonna walk you through what we did in a VS Code plugin for tool tips um, and a, a teaser on something that's coming next. But the idea is not only do we want to have robust command line tooling, but we are also delivering on visual tooling as well. You'll see this in the demo, and we're going to keep um, talking about this in the future. And I just noticed uh, a typo, Angular tooltip extension for VS Code is what it should say, not VS Core. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so I mentioned the, the financial chart a little bit earlier in that number two item, which was the big release here, but this is a beautiful screenshot of what the default experience looks like for the financial chart. Again, this is across every platform. I'll show you a demo of this, but you can see that you've got different chart types. We have an automatic toolbar across the top, which lets you do things like set an indicator, overlay, do automatic filtering, date ranges, chart types, the type of volume indicators you want, and trend lines. And just think about this, we have like, you know, um, geez, multiple chart indicators, multiple overlays, uh, different types of chart types, our trend lines, we probably have 15 or 20 trend lines, um, 18 or 20 financial indicators. So everything you really need to deliver a beautiful financial charting experience is built in, and this is one line of code to get the whole thing. You don't have to worry about doing a whole lot of configuration. Spreadsheet, again, proof is in the pudding. I'll let Brian demo this and show you some of the value. But at the end of the day, what we want you to do is have a spreadsheet solution without having Excel. So we are going to continue to add value to the spreadsheet through the Excel library that gives you all of the interactions that you would expect from Microsoft Excel. The number one thing we hear from customers, and this is across the board, and I've been at Infragistics now for almost 15 years, is customers want Excel. It's like, okay, they want Excel. Why do they want Excel? Oh, because they love to work with their data. They love all the things that Excel does. So what we're constantly trying to do is give customers what Excel does and then way more uh, in, a, in a tabular grid, right? Because then you can control it a little bit more and it's how data is structured in a database. Well, Excel, the spreadsheet works a little bit different. You could have multiple tables in a single spreadsheet, in a single sheet. Each sheet could have bunch of things happening so the user has even more capability to do customizations and we're bringing that to you in the infragistics uh, spreadsheet components and we have this in wpf windows forms and javascript and we will be delivering it in angular later this year so we're pretty excited about this brian i'll kind of show you what's happening here and then i can't say enough about the zam data grid we've done so much work on performance over the last maybe five years in this grid but last year we had some customer scenarios which were super interesting that pushed us even further. And now, hands down, this grid crushes it on performance. It is incredible how much data you can load in this grid and how fast it scrolls. For all the WPF folks on the line, you know WPF has built-in performance limitations and impairments. 
And all we've done for years is fight and fight and fight on how to overcome those within the product. And I think we've gotten there. Brian will demo it. It's pretty slick. We've also had some other features uh, like cell merging. We have a new image field. I'm going to let Brian go over the new control configurator for the grid. Needless to say, WPF is here to stay. It is the rich client platform uh, in the enterprise market today for sure. And we have massive customers that are on WPF or Windows Forms that want to move to the web. And so they're looking at things like Angular. But WPF is a long-term strategy for many other customers. So you still have web, you have WPF. And so it's good times across the board for what we're doing in WPF and what you can expect from us on the rich client side and in Angular. So with that, that's the end of the slides. Let me jump into a couple demos. What I'm gonna do first is bring up the um, Ignite UI for uh, Angular page here. And this is the, the homepage. So if you go to the infragistics.com website, you go to developers, grab Ignite UI for Angular, and this is what shows up. If you've never used the product, go ahead and click get started for free. It launches you to another page. But one of the things we've done, and that other page will let you kind of register and, and grab the bits. But one of the things we've done on the homepage for this product is we want to show you the product right away. So we're actually including live running samples you know, in the flash right on the home page, which we've never done before. We've always said, hey, go to the sample browser and take a look at the samples there. But the reason we can do this is this product's all about modern web. It's a mobile first modern web product designed to be lightweight, super fast, low impact on the overall page size and rendering. So if you think about this product, let's say that uh, if I have a grid on a chart on a page, it's around 100 KB, and that's before it's being gzipped by, uh, by the server and coming down in the browser. So you're looking at a highly optimized, you know, 10 to 40 KB experience to start building out these pages. And then you get your own, you adding your own stuff. But, you know, in the past, you'd be like, oh man, should I use this component? It's a 250 KB component or our Excel spreadsheet on Windows Forms, I think is like 12 megabytes, right? So back in the rich client, you don't really care, but on web, you do care. So we have optimized this product for high performance. And you can see as I scroll horizontally, it's like buttery smooth that can scroll real fast. And then vertically, it's like slick, slick, slick. So anyway, that's just something I wanna introduce you to. But from this sample, it does show off a host of the features that we've added. So you can see here, I've got the select all option. I can select individual um, items in rows from my little um, uh, menu on, the, on each header. I've got a filter value, so I can do things like very quickly sort by individuals. And you can see I type in IV and then every name with IV shows up and I do IVY, I just get the IVY. I can go ahead and reset that guy uh, across here on our toolbar. We've added, um, and this is some app code, but we've added a drop down, which will let you show and hide individual columns. So column hiding ends up being something that's real important. And obviously being able to persist this, you can persist these values through JSON on your client and then reload them up, um, take them to your server, whatever. Column pinning was also added. So here, if I pin a couple more columns, you'll notice on the left side that these columns do not move as I scroll. So you can see here that I'm scrolling back and forth and those columns are staying the same, but I wanna get rid of position and company again. And I just wanna have um, the photo and name and that sort of makes this a, a, a nicer uh, experience. You also notice that these columns are set up for summaries. So if I scroll to the right, I have a few more summaries here. And what I wanna do here is you'll notice some of these summaries are truncated, and this is a great opportunity to show off the column resizing feature. So here, and that's kind of a setup, right? So uh, you would probably resize your columns so things show up the way you want, but here it's really easy to let the users interactively resize columns and then add and show summaries. And then finally, I will click the to Excel button. And what this is gonna do is export this grid to Excel. So down on my little um, toolbar here, you'll notice I've got this report that popped up. It's gonna open up my Excel. And there I've got all of my data in this sheet. Now keep in mind, and we all understand the value of not having smoke and mirrors and like demoware, 
that grid had 3,000 rows and I don't know, like 25 columns. But that's 3,000 rows that literally, if I hit refresh on my page, is loading up in almost no time, right? So you're talking about, you know, sub second page load time. And I think the statistic is if a website page loads like three seconds or more, um, people move on. So this is 3,000 records in being loaded and virtualized in the grid all at once. Let me scroll down to the chart. This is the um, financial chart. So I'll go through this real quick. Brian's gonna show the same thing in WPF so you can see the, the difference. But you'll notice on the bottom, I've got my zoom bar, which allows me to zoom in and out of the actual chart. Now, notice what happens here on my X axis on the chart. I've got April 2017 through December 2018. And now I'm gonna zoom in. And what we've done with this is we've added a brand new time series to the chart. So the date time is automatically determined. And as we zoom in and zoom out, it's just gonna continue to zoom in to the least common date that it has. And all that's automatic. Like you don't have to worry about any of that. Now let's say you wanna use a different financial indicator. I wanna use a mass index pricing. So now I've got that indicator up. Um, if I want to use a different uh, financial indicator, I can pop that up. You'll notice I've got tool tips that are nicely formatted based on this. If I want to add an overlay like Bollinger Band overlays, I can get that and I can zoom in. Whoops. If I want to add different trend lines, we have all of this built in and you don't have to worry about any of this. It's all pre-configured in the chart and it allows you to just give it data and, and we do the rest of the work. So it's super impressive sort of what we've done here with the chart and another nice thing, a nice delighter. You'll notice on the Y axis here on the right, we did something called large number formatting, which is a feature we borrowed from our Report Plus product, which if you haven't looked at Report Plus, it is a business solution for dashboarding and data analytics. And you just download it from the app store, you use our, our desktop version, whatever, and you just kind of throw data at it, you create dashboards, share them with your, with your teams. But they had this feature called large number formatting, which was pretty slick, which means I don't have to have 11 comma 000 for 11,000, I'll say 11.5K or 11K or 10.5K. So even at that level, we're trying to add these nice features, which take away the thinking from you. You just wanna like get something beautiful by default, that's our focus. And then let me scroll down here to this page just so you know where to get things. This is where you can get all of the samples and everything that says new is a new sample. But let me jump into the data grid samples real quick, because I just wanna show you a couple features of how you should use the sample browser, because we've definitely changed our attitude and how we're approaching showing you how to use the product. So for example, this is the launching page to get into the grid samples, which we have here on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you'll notice a bunch of links. So what you can do is click right into these guys and on this one page, you have all of the help for this product. So if you're wondering how to do something and what API we have, it's all right here in a single page. This means you don't have to go searching all over our site to find out the best way to implement a specific feature. So, oh, you're interested in column pinning. I actually, we have customers that said, we're waiting to, for you to add column pinning to move from Windows Forms to Angular because that's the key feature we had. So here's the column pinning. And then I can see right here under it how easy it is to add column pinning um, to this grid. So you can see here, pinned equals true. Even cooler, if I want to actually run this sample and change it myself, we've added this button, view on stack blitz. And if you don't know what stack blitz is, and um, you're just moving to Angular, it's the coolest online IDE um, for working with code. So basically what I did here is I just opened up this sample in StackBlitz and I can go ahead and modify this sample, change the code, look at what we did as far as, hey, how did Infragistics get the data into the grid? What are they importing in terms of the components or dependencies that they need? What does the CSS look like? What is the actual HTML for this component? And then finally, you can see here, here's the actual running code. 
So the cool thing is, is if you modify this, it's a hot reload, it just loads up right here. So what we want you to do is use this as how not only you are exploring features for the product, but it's also how you learn how to use the product. So if I jump down here to category chart, this is a very simple demo. Um, it kind of just walks you through the different types of chart types that you ship that we ship with the category chart. But you're like, man, I really want to know how to do that chart type. Well, what you can do is click view this on Stack Blitz. Um, so not only do you have all the help code behind there, but I want to go and I want to look exactly at what Infragistics does to get that type of chart. Because in the webinar, Jason said I only needed one line of code. Well, technically, this is like one line of code. If I like stretch it out, it's just three attributes on the IGX category chart component. But I set the data source to data. This one happens to have a chart title and the chart type is what I'm selecting from this list. If I got rid of chart type, it would automatically um, show this by default. So what we want you to do, like I said, is use this tool not only as an exploratory tool for the features but also how to learn the product and then of course i can scroll down and i can see exactly how i would implement a category chart in my page so go to the ignite ui for angular page off of our home page and you'll be you'll be brought to all these through all the links and you can check out all the samples yourself um, on angular the last thing i want to show you as far as uh, angular goes is the cli and let me jump over here to this guy um actually no this sample here and what i did was um i just ran uh a quick uh you know sample here on the cli it was a a grid sample and it tells me to open up my localhost 4200 and i'm going to walk you through this real quick but let me just go to the end result real quick and this is uh that's a stack blitz let me go to localhost 4200. And this guy will come up and you can see I had this sample which added a bunch of different grid templates that we have which kind of show off um, some different capabilities of the grid. But in order to get things like this, which is really slick, you would just use the CLI. There's two ways to actually use the CLI. One of them like I use here is through Visual Studio Code. Another one is you can just use PowerShell and PowerShell um, or Bash or you know your whatever command line tool you're using um, allows you to uh, just run the run the CLI right from here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my directory real quick. And I've already installed the Ignite UI uh, CLI. And the way you install the Ignite UI CLI is you're just going to say um, npm install, and I'm going to say Ignite UI dash CLI. Now you only need to do this once. I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. And what I actually did is I wanted this thing to be installed globally. So I say minus G or dash G, and then I can run this um, shortcut, which is IG from wherever I want. So I type in IG, and then the CLI kicks off and starts. So the first thing it says is, what's the name for my project? So I'm going to say the name of my project is new project one, and this is like a wizard. So it's gonna say, well, what framework? Angular, jQuery, React, I'm gonna say Angular. I want Ignite UI for Angular. So now it generated um, this project structure for me. So if I open up this, my uh, folder here, and I go to this folder, and I just sort here, I got my new project one, and you can see I've got these files that it just laid out for me. So it's already starting now to create this entire Angular project for me. So it'll just continue to do that as I'm working through my wizard. So let's add a component. I wanna add a grid. Yes, a grid. We can do a custom grid or just a standard grid. If I do custom grid, let's say it's called custom grid one, what it's asking me is what features do I actually want in this grid? So I wanna do sorting and summaries and we can do paging and then i just hit enter and i can say complete and run and or i can add a view now let's say view i'm going to add the awesome grid and we'll say awesome grid one now the awesome grid is a custom template that i added which has a bunch of features and the beauty of this is you can actually add all of your own 
custom templates to the CLI. So let's say your company has branding standards, has things that you want to have in every default shell experience, et cetera, you can go ahead and do that. So this always takes a few seconds to do. It takes some time. I'm not going to let it filter. You guys can go do this yourself. But what's going to end up happening is all of this now will start filling out and I'll get the code for these individual components. So you can see here the awesome grid is already here. So if I go here to this project, I right click, I'm gonna open this specific folder in Visual Studio Code. And what you'll see is as I drill into the source, I'll go to app, I'll go to custom grid one, I'll go to the HTML for custom grid one, and it generated all this code for me. So you can see that I said I wanted these specific features um, for this code, so it, or for this sample, so it went ahead and added them. Uh, the awesome grid, if I open this guy's HTML up, you can see it's a very robust grid with a bunch of different templates and different ways of kind of showing me how to use this product. So use the CLI not, not only as a productivity tool, but as a learning tool, and um, you'll, be, you'll be happy at the end of the day. And then one last thing before I pass this off to Brian is if I just go to npm, um, mpmjs.com, this is actually how you acquire the product and you install it. So what you wanna do is you wanna go here and it will tell you exactly how to acquire the product and there's some other information about it, et cetera, um, to, to install this. And it's the same thing here. If I type in Ignite UI dash CLI, it will bring me to the Ignite UI CLI page. This is how I would install the CLI and get going with this product. So with that, I hope you're ex as excited about some of these new features we're adding to the web uh, as we are. We're gonna continue to invest in this product pretty heavily. We actually have the roadmap um, published as well. So if I go to Ignite UI for Angular and I scroll down on this page that we were just on, you'll notice that I've got here the Ignite UI for Angular roadmap. And uh, I go into detail here about everything that you should expect from us and when um, between now and the end of the year. So please give us feedback on that um, as you look at it. But with that, um, I took a little more time than I was supposed to. I'm going to pass it off to Brian now, who is going to walk you through some of these features on WPF and our cross-platform strategy. So, Brian, I am going to make you the presenter. All right, I'm and ready. I think you got the baton. All right, let me know when you can see my screen. I see it. Perfect. Thanks. All right, so first... I want to kind of continue on with the the angular product that uh, jason was just showing and show some of the tools that we are providing and working on to make your life easier so i personally i'm not an angular guy if you've been following me at all i am hardcore xaml so when i jump into the uh, a platform like angular it's like a whole nother world so some of the things I, i've identified when i start learning angular is man i really want to make this easy for myself which means it's going to make it easy for you now, one of the simplest tools we just released is a tooltip extension. And you're like, ah, tooltips, okay, yeah. But no, they're really helpful. So in this particular example, we have a grid defined. It's completely empty. But I can scroll over this grid, and I can click on this link, and it's going to take me directly to the documentation. I don't have to search Google or Bing or whatever, Yahoo, what, whatever you use for your, uh, your internet searches. You don't have to use that. You don't have to go search through all our products on the Infragistics website trying to find this specific page. We're gonna take you right to it, huge time saver. Another thing we did was add a, a snippet here that shows you how to use the component. But what's even better is you can actually copy and paste this snippet directly into your editor. Okay, well that's cool, right? It's simple, but effective, right? It really helps a lot. Well, what really helps me is I get really confused with NPM. I'm like, oh my God. NPM, well, I got to go to the app module TS and add these imports. I got to register these modules. Like, dude, this is so confusing. Like, why can't I just add a namespace like in XAML and be done, right? Well, so one of the tools we're working on, and this is never before seen. You guys are the first one to see this. Uh, we're working on basically, think of it as like a control wizard, okay? So we're going to have a right-click menu that says add Ignite UI Angular component. We might change the name. We don't know. Well, when you click on that, you're going to get this little dialogue that pops up, and this is ugly because no design work has been done whatsoever. It's essentially a prototype, okay? 
And then you can see we're going to list all our components. We might have searches, you know, or put commons width at the top or let you pin controls you use. We don't know yet. But the idea is like, man, I want to use the grid. Okay, great. Well, now it's going to take you to another page where you say, oh, yeah, I want to turn on paging. You know, I want to add a column called uh, first name. We'll say that's first. Yeah, let's make that filterable and sortable. I'll add another column, you know, last name. You get the idea, right? You come in here, add some columns, turn on some features. And before you hit generate, there's a little button at the bottom here that says install. What this is going to do is if this is checked, it's going to go download the required NPM packages automatically. It's going to add your imports automatically. And it's going to register all your modules automatically and then stick in your code snippet that you just generated automatically. So all you have to do now is come in here and say, oh, this is my data source, and then run your app and you're up and running. So it's really meant just to get you started as quickly as possible, have them go through all that ceremony just to add a control, right? It's a little annoying personally, but you know what? I'm a XAML guy. You're gonna hear that from me a lot. So that's what we're working on on the tooling side. And honestly, hopefully I'm hoping to have this released in about three to four weeks. We gotta get some, uh, some UI, UX work on there and, experiment with usability uh, but that's the vision that's this is where we're going so we're really hoping that this is going to up your pro productivity gain while you do uh, angular development with our controls okay so we're done with angular i'm going to move on to uh, wpf because that's where i live now jason already covered the financial chart right the financial chart is awesome he covered all the great features and all the options you can do to it but he missed like the really cool stuff, like the really geeky stuff. Now, what I mean by that is how does this thing actually work, right? Like what's the API look like? How, how's this work? Well, let me show you something. If you're, if you're doing XAML and you're an MVVM guy, then you're like me. You want something stupid simple. So I have an MVVM with a collection and all I have to do is bind my item source to that collection and it works. Right? It could be a collection or a collection of collections. It doesn't matter. The chart will interpret that data and take care of everything automatically. Okay, so it, it's kind of kind of cool, actually. So if you think about it, what happens is when you bind this data source to it, first it's going to look at this data source and say, hey, do you have an open, high, low, close, volume, and date columns? Yes or no? Well, if it finds those, it's going to handle them accordingly. If it doesn't find them, it's essentially going to take the first six numeric columns and the first date and generate the grid uh, or the chart, excuse me. And of course, if you don't like that, we have tons of properties in here that allow you to go manually modify that just to get it dialed right in just like you like it. Uh, so that's all I wanna talk about on the uh, financial chart. Jason covered the rest of the cool stuff. Uh, next up, let's talk about the data grid. Now the data grid, this thing is probably the most powerful, highest performing data grid on the market, period. I've never met a data grid faster. And every release, it just keeps getting better. Uh, actually, our our biggest performance uh, increase we had was in like 17, one or two. The, we changed the way we rendered, and it was just amazing. It blows me away every time. Well, we added two great features to this. One was a pretty big feature. Uh, one is called cell merging. Uh, we all kind of know what cell merging is. It, it's born from the Excel days, right? You have uh, a, a column of contiguous records. And you say, you know what, these are all the same. Let me just merge these so it looks like one big cell. Uh, that way I don't just see a whole bunch of lines, right? So I, I wanna merge these cells. And the way we expose this is we have a merge cell mode that you can set to always, only when sorted, or never. So obviously never, it's like I'm never gonna use um, cell merging, uh, only when sorting, hey, when I sort on category or whatever, it will merge the contiguous records of that column. Or it could be always, which means no matter where I'm at, if there are values that are next to each other that are the same, let's merge them. And what we did is we didn't wanna break the editing experience, right? So you can still come in here and edit each of these. And when you do that, you can see how we split the record and we, we kind of split the merge on both sides, top and bottom. So we keep that con context of merge cells but you do not lose that great editing experience that we provide. The next thing we added is really a productivity boost. It's like, you know, the, the XAM data grid has been around since WPF first came out. I mean, what's that, 2008 is when we started working on it. 
I think 2009 it was released. It's the most mature data grid out there, period. But with that comes some baggage, and that baggage is a very deep, feature-rich API. And one of the most complicated things that used to happen uh, is if you wanted to add an image to the XAM data grid. I mean, the amount of code you had to write to simply insert an image was ridiculous. You had to create a style, restyle the data presenter, or the content presenter, put in the content template, and it would, trust me, it was a ton of work. Well, now it is a simple single line of code. We have added an image field object. So you set image field. The name is, of course, the underlying uh, property name of the uh, bound object, and then it just works. Simple as that. Uh, to give you a better idea, I have this little app up. Not only do we provide support for just basic, like, yeah, I have an image URI. It works with an image source, an image URI object, not just a string, right? We have an image URI string, a relative URI, or a byte array. So we really handle 98% of image loading sources for you automatically. All you have to do is set the name of the image field and your images are displaying in the XAM data grid. Okay, moving on. Now we have a lot to cover on the spreadsheet because this spreadsheet is awesome. Let me close this. I'm trying to stay within the, the context of the sample browser. That way you guys can come in here and play with it and know exactly what I'm talking about. In the past, I used to have my own little sample apps, but you guys never had access to that. So I was like, hey, Brian, how about using the sample browser? I'm like, okay, I can do that. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is conditional formatting. Now, of course, conditional formatting, uh, that's one of those things is a staple of Excel documents, period. It's essentially what happens is when you have some type of condition that says, if this value, then I want you to format the cell with this color or this font or, or, or whatever, right? Underline it, you know, change it red, show uh, an icon. So if I scroll over to example unit price, you know, right now it's at uh, red, I have a little red circle there, it's at 32, what happens if I change it to 60? Okay, now it's kind of a yellowish orangish color, uh, what if I go 125? Oh, it's green. I guess that's good, right? Yeah, green's always good. But essentially, this allows you to create any type of conditional formatting rules and display them in your application using the Infragistics spreadsheet control. And the great thing about this spreadsheet control is that it's also available not only on WPF, but WinForms and JavaScript. So if I pop open this JavaScript, uh, where is my browser? There it is, uh, right here. So if we look at Ignite UI for JavaScript, this is the same spreadsheet, exact same API, exact same feature set. It will be consistent no matter what platform you're on. And here we go, it's the same file with the same conditional formatting applied. It's awesome. So this means that you can take any spreadsheet created in Microsoft Excel and open it on the web or in your WPF applications. Okay, now besides just conditional formatting, we actually added a ton of work. Uh, a lot of them are small, things such as for WPF, we have a format sales dialog. So it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna right click this and say format sales. Now you get this great uh, dialog. It should look very familiar if you've ever used Excel and say, yeah, I wanna, you know, make this bold and make it huge. And then I'm gonna go to my border and add some borders and you know, maybe you want to fill the color I don't know. I don't know how this works. I never used a uh, never used this part, but boom, you know, there we go So the format sales dialogue uh, Worksheet sorting and filtering what I mean by worksheet So we all use tables, you know, and tables have the little drop down at the top that allows you to filter and sort but there's also worksheet filtering sorting meaning you know, these items here, all, all this data, these are not within the context of a table object in Excel. This is just a flat worksheet. However, I can still right click and say, I wanna sort largest to smallest, right? Or I wanna right click and sort smallest to largest. Or I wanna come over to, uh, how about this? And say, I wanna filter on the value, right? And then we get these little drop downs now. Oh, that's cool. Well, we have a text filter. What can we do with this? How about begins with uh, G or 
B, or how about, no, let's do, let's do contains uh, B. I don't know what comes up. Oh, great. Right. So this is extremely useful when you just want to do some quick analyzation of some data and you want to analyze data real quick and it's not in a table and, or in a format that you, you really want to uh, want to have it in. However, we do have tables, table improvements to talk about as well. One of those improvements would be those drop downs. Hey, let's sort A to Z, right? Let's sort Z to A. Let's add some filters. These were not in here previously to the 18.1 release. Now you have the ability to sort and filter within a table directly. Not only that, we've added some nice contextual menu options such as, you know, I want to insert some rows, I want to insert some columns, I want to clear the contents, I want to add a totals row, right? So I added a totals row. Now for each column, I could say, oh yeah, let's sum that up. Or, uh, you know, what's the maximum value in there? Or, you know, give me the count. Well, what's the average, right? So you have a number of options that you can use within a table that really makes your life a lot easier, uh, especially when you're trying to aggregate this data together. Uh, other things we have, uh, cell drop downs, list validations. Uh, oh, one more cool thing I wanna talk about, like, okay, let's go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and delete the table row, right? But previously, if you were to tab through the table, it would have gone under the table, but now it's just like Excel. As I tab through and edit, we get we add new rows to this table on every new line, if you will. So it's just the little things that make the editing experience so much better. We have a lot more in our backlog on, on what we want to improve in this area, uh, but it, it's really, really close to Excel pixel by pixel. I mean, it's a pixel perfect experience and, and we're getting there slowly. Uh, let's see, was there anything else worth men mentioning? I know we're really short on time because uh, Jason likes to talk a lot. Uh, I, I think that's a, a good spot to, to stop. Uh, Jason, if you uh, had anything else you wanted to say. Let me unmute. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, no, that's awesome. That's like incredible uh, stuff on this release. You showed all, all the goodies. I think the big thing here is what you're showing is cross platform so you can get the same thing in javascript with ignite ui for javascript on the web you can get it in windows forms you can get it in wpf and like i said we're going to move this to angular later in the year so spreadsheets huge tons of cool features and um super impressive so thanks brian for that and i am going to take the uh screen back here and um are you sure you want to make me the presenter yes i think i do well like actually actually no Hold on, let me make sure I'm making the right person, the presenter here. Now I'm the right, yep, show my screen. All right, cool. So to wrap this up, um, I've got a couple slides left here to show that will just uh, highlight what to do next. So let this pump over. Let me close this. There's a couple questions, uh, Brian, in the chat window if you wanna grab those. We'll answer all the questions and make sure everything's answered, uh, of course. Uh, and you have our emails as well. We'll pop those up at the end. But the message here, download 18.1 today. Go to infragistics.com forward slash ultimate. Get all the good stuff. We've added value across all these platforms. And like I said, the important thing to remember is what Brian is showing maps to our cross-platform strategy. So all those features end up in the other platforms as well. So even if you're doing Windows Forms, you get a ton of value. If you're doing um, J jQuery JavaScript, you get a ton of value. If you're doing MVC, ton of value. If you're doing Angular, obviously we went through all of those features. So please go download 18.1 today if you haven't already and let us know. Then another uh, announcement I wanna make is we have a webinar coming up on June 12th. We're gonna also be releasing a brand new product that's going to help developers and designers work better together. So we've already have Indigo Studio, which is our super impressive prototyping tool uh, to help you build interactive prototypes, collaborate with users, do usability studies, run on devices, all those great things. Uh, and, and we're gonna further continue that story from the visual designer to the UX designer to the developer who wants code, et cetera. So please look out for the email to sign up and register for our webinar on June 12th. I am convinced you'll be blown away. So please sign up for that when it hey, comes. Hey, Jason. Uh, yep. 
actually, I have one more thing I want to show. Oh, well, go, go for it. <laughs> yeah, let me, we let can't me. miss this. I can't believe I almost forgot this because it's like my favorite. All right, hold on. Change presenter. Brian, yes, go for it. Show it. All right, do you see my screen? Mm hmm Okay, I can't believe I almost forgot this. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have heard about the Invergistus control configurators, but these things are amazing. Okay, so I talked about how awesome the Zam data grid is, but what a very deep and feature-rich API we have, which means it can be hard to learn and hard to find the specific feature you want and turn it on. So if you're in here hand typing your XAML, trying to find things through IntelliSense, man, you're gonna have a rough day. But we have what's called a control configurator. What this does is allows me to select the control, like I'm just gonna select, put my mouse on the control in the editor. You see this little light bulb? I'm gonna, it's a quick action. I'm gonna click on that and say, who? hey, what's this? What's this configure XAM data grid? So I'm gonna pop this open and I gotta resize this because I shrunk my screen down for purposes of uh, demonstrations. So what this is, it is a visual configurator that allows you to visually see the changes you are making as you turn features on and off in the XAM data grid. So the first step is, oh man, you know what? I got a data bind to a source, right? So I'm gonna create a data binding. It's gonna automatically find my view model based on a convention, but if we get the convention wrong, you can always manually go back and set it to the, the object that you want. In this case, you're like, okay, the name of this is data grid view, it's data grid view model, perfect, we found it. So we're gonna list all the properties in that view model. So I'm gonna say, ooh, I have a collection of orders right here. I'm gonna create a binding there. Once we set that data source, we're gonna have this awesome order layout created for us automatically because we went and we looked at your data source, we interpreted it and said, oh yeah, you got all this stuff in it. So now I'm gonna come in here and say, you know what? Yeah, I wanna add the customer.first name, customer.last name, maybe a city. Uh, state and zip sounds good. You know, we can add more information on here if we want. But notice as I add these columns, you can visually see those columns being added with design time data. Okay, let me just kind of move that. So we generate this design time data for you automatically. Okay, well, cool. Well, I want to see each of the order details for th these records, right? So we have another field layout, order details. Let's add that. Boom, another order layout, order details layout has been added to the object tree on the top left. Okay, well, I probably want the name and I want the price. Oh, cool, I got these little these little uh, expanders. Let me expand those. Oh man, I got you know design team data on this as well. So I can click this price and say, oh, you know what? I can start changing the information or the, the display of, of this data here if I want. I have format. You know, I can set all the properties of this object using the property on the right. Or, you know what, like, I'm going to go up to the uh, the data grid and say, man, I want to allow filtering. So let's go ahead and check that. Boom, I got my filtering. Uh, you know, I want to add sorting. So under grouping and sorting, let's go, yeah, when I, uh, when I click on the label, let's sort by one field only. So I can click on that. Oh, that works. You know, works exactly how I behave, how I would expect it. You know, I can turn off allow group by. You know, I don't want you to be grouping or I can change the location. I want it below, I want it at the bottom. No matter what you do in here, we make it stupid simple for you to configure your grid exactly how you want it. And you don't have to worry about the APIs. Like, man, I really want to up my performance. No problem. We'll launch this advanced performance dialogue and allow you to come in here and start messing with all these cool performance features that we ship, right? Like, oh yeah, I want to select all those bad boys. Perfect, let's apply these features. Okay, now once you get it right where you want, I'm gonna apply and close all this information, format my XAML, and look at all the XAML that was written for you. you didn't, I didn't have to write a line of that, not one single line, right? So I just wanted to show that control configurator because that thing is awesome. I never use a XAM data grid without it. And the great thing is, is you get it for free with your, uh, with your subscription to our Infragistic WPF product, and you get it directly from the marketplace. So if we go to extensions and updates, I'll wait for this to load because Visual Studio is nice and slow. Oh, and, and decided not to respond. Uh, fun. 
But anyways, you just go to your Visual Studio. Oh, there, it showed up. And search the marketplace for Infragistics and WPF and Xamarin Forms con control configurators, uh, because yes, we have these for Xamarin Forms and WPF. Uh, so go ahead and play with that. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's like my favorite toy that we have. Uh, play with it and uh, be productive. All right, back to okay. you. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Brian. I think um, that's a good wrap up there. I'm going to change the presenter to me real quick, show my screen. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show uh, is make sure you sign up for the next webinar. And then finally, um, the Angular roadmap. I had shown you this on how to find it already. And, and then the last thing is our email. So I answered all the questions in the, uh, the chat box, but if there's something else you wanna know um, or you didn't get enough detail in the answer, just email Brian or myself, Jason, be at infragistics.com or be lagunas at infragistics.com. And we are more than happy to answer the questions ourselves or route you to the right folks that can. So with that, I wanna thank everyone for coming today to this 18.1 webinar. The recording will be up on YouTube later today, as well as a follow-up uh, email and a link to the blog post. So thanks again, everyone, and thanks a lot, Brian, for your help, and thanks to Summer for setting this up for us. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.